Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. You know what it is. It's Friday. I will be live tonight. Make sure you guys are there for the live stream talking about UFC Fight Night, Sanhagen versus Rob Font. But right now for this video, we are doing the bets and prediction, I guess. I don't know. Final bets for Saturday's uh, fight night with Sanhagen versus Rob Font. We're going to go through the whole card. Um, there's going to be some good bets. There's going to be some risky bets but let's talk about it either way and again i think this is a really really good betting uh, uh weekend betting opportunity not so many underdogs that are dogs to me in this one but either way let's talk about it ufc prelims let's start with obviously we're gonna go bottom to top Odie osborne versus uh, sue alambayov alambayov Ode osborne is a plus 160 underdog and something that I really, really like with like, okay, let's, uh, for Ode Osborne, uh, da, 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 12 wins, five losses. Asu is 17 and two. They have Ode a little bit more of an underdog on FanDuel. And he's a couple years older than Asu, taller and a little bit of a reach. Again, with Ode, he's lost three times now, two times, a Manel uh, Cape, Finished him and so did Tyson Nam. A lot of decisions on his record. Three, or I guess not really a lot, but nine finishes overall out of his 12 victories. Again, you know, beating Charles Johnson, who is a really good output. Fun fight for sure. Again, finished by Tyson Nam. Did uh, uh, finish Zeruk Adeshev. Menel Kopp finished him. He beat Jerome Rivera, Brian Kelleher in his debut, uh, guillotined him. Again, he has some really good triangles, arm bars. He has a couple by triangle. He is a finisher. Again, nine finishes out of 12 victories. Looking at Asu, who has 17 wins on a 13-fight winning streak, you know, something that I really like with him is he has 11 finishes out of his 17 victories, eight of them by submission. Now, if you go over to FanDuel and you look at Asu Alambayov by submission, it's a plus 340. That is an unbelievable bet, and I really, really like that too. Again, if you look at Ode Osborne, he, you know, he's been finished two times by submission. Don't think he's been he's been guillotined by Brian Kelleher, like I said, back in 2020 when he made his debut. He actually said some weird stuff uh, building up into that fight, leading into that fight, that he was going to be the next you know guy or whatever, which a little weird talking about that on your debut fight, Brian Kelleher. That fight may have actually been a short notice one for O'Day, maybe. Either way. Either way, it doesn't really matter, but I really, really like Asu Alambayov by submission plus 340. Some really, really good stuff there. That's a really, really good bet. Next, we got Cody Durden versus Jake Hadley. Durden is a plus 160 to a minus 200 for Jake Hadley. I like Hadley in this fight. This is the fighter I picked to win. Um, but you look at Jake Hadley um, by points, which is plus 350. I think this fight goes to decision, and I think Jake Hadley wins by uh, points. Cody Durden can make it a little weird with his style, but even Cody Durden's a plus 280, uh, you know, with going to a decision. I like Hadley. I think he's going to be the stronger guy. I do think Cody Durden's going to be a little faster, a little quicker than uh, Jake, but I think if Jake can get a hold of him and get him in dominant positions, it's going to be hard for Durden to get out of those positions because Hadley is so much, he's going to be so much stronger. So I like Jake Hadley by points, and that's a plus 3 50. I don't really see submission from Jake Hadley. You know, Cody Durden's really, really good, uh, at least like defensive wise, like submissions and stuff like that. Well, I guess we skipped one, which was uh, Sean Woodson. We'll get back to that one in a second. But like, you know, Jake Hadley's 10 and 1. His one loss was Alan. Um, it was fucking Alan Nascimento. That's what it was. Again, he has five submissions, three by KO, TKO, eight finishes out of his 10 victories. Co oops, Cody Durden, you know, he's 15-4-1. I didn't realize his record was actually that good, to be honest. He has 11 finishes out of his 15 victories. And again, has been decision quite often. Carlos Modi went to decision. Charles Johnson, he went to decision. Um, you know, two back-to-back -back decisions. I just have this feeling that this fight goes to decision. Chaos is going to happen. But I really, really like Jake Hadley in this one. And him being a plus 350 uh, underdog by points. I like Jake Hadley a lot by points. And I think it's a good bet to make for sure. And then next we have Sean Woodson fighting Denise Bazukia. 
I think that's how you say his name. I might be wrong on that. Sorry. I, I like Denise Bazookia in this one. He's a plus 152 underdog. There's not very many bets because it's such a short notice fight, but I like Dennis Bazookia. Jeremiah Wells versus Carlson Harris. Carlson Harris is a plus 110, I mean plus 100 underdog, which is basically a pick It's very, very close. Something I really like about this is Jeremiah Wells is a plus, uh, plus 260 by TKO or KO. Carlson Harris by points is a plus 500. Jeremiah Wells by points is plus 430. Carlson Harris by submission is a plus 440. Now, if you look at the fighters, dang it, it's off again. Their whole setup's weird, I guess. Jeremiah Wells is 12-2-1. He is a lot older than Carlson Harris as well. Nine finishes out of his 12 victories. Hasn't been submitted. He has two losses by decision. Um, again, Carlson Harris is 18 to five. So much more experience is, oh, they're the same age. I think, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Jeremiah Wells will be, um, 37 later on, but Carlson Harris has been finished by punches twice in his career. 10 finishes out of 18 victories. I really like Jeremiah Wells by KO in this one. And is a, you know, plus 260 or I like Jeremiah Wells by 430 plus 430 by points I like Jeremiah Wells and there's some really really good bets if I was betting I do Jeremiah Wells by KO or TKO I believe there's also uh da, 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 da. there's not which sucks but either way I really like over oh plus 140 over two and a half Okay, that's fair. So if you wanted to, you could do Jeremiah Wells TKO or KO by round number two. They don't think it's going to go past the second round. So that is a good bet to make right there. Um, now points again, Colson Harris is pretty good on the ground. Again, 18 victories. You know, he has five wins by submission. Not a huge submission guy. He's more of like an anaconda, Dars type of guy. Arm triangle he does have, but that was... A long time ago his thing is Darces so he's not a huge threat like triangles or arm bars he's just not a big threat with that so Jeremiah Wells by points could be a big one Jeremiah Wells by finish by TKO or KO could be another huge one and honestly I like Jeremiah Wells KO TKO round number two plus 950 huge awesome great bet there let's go on to the next one Next, we got Kyler Phillips versus Ronnie Barcelos. Ronnie Barcelos is a plus 168 underdog. Kyler Phillips is minus 210. Now, with Ronnie Barcelos getting devastatingly knocked out cold by Umar, who's not a big power puncher, honestly, at all, um, it, it makes it a little bit weird in this one because like Kyler Phillips by TKO or KO is a plus 340. I, I'm not really for sure on how Ronnie is going to, or Hani, I think that's how you say it, Hani Barcelos. I'm not really for sure on how they're going. he's going to heal. It wasn't that long ago when he was finished. You know, he, he lost in 2023, uh, January 14th. So I guess it's been about seven months. It'd be about six and a half months. So I guess that's a, that's a little bit of time, a little bit enough time, maybe. But Kyler Phillips being the style that he has, I like Kyler Phillips. You know, he's... 10 and 2, and he has seven finishes out of his 10 wins. His only loss is Willy Von Paiva, who he was absolutely destroying. The only and he has a win over Yadong Song Yadong, which is wild, honestly. Like either way, either way, I like uh Kyler Phillips in this one. I think he wins by TK or KO, or even by points. Is a, is another one. It's a plus 170, but by TKO or by finish is plus 340 he's not a big submission guy only has two of them but with his kicks and his style i could see him getting a finish over ronnie barcelos ronnie barcelos to win by points or submission was a plus 1400 i like kyler phillips to win this fight either way and then hopefully it's and then yep billy q versus damon jackson and damon jackson plus 148 billy q is a minus 184 you know, Damon Jackson's a plus 500 by submission. I understand Billy Q has never been submitted. I like Damon Jackson by points, 350. I think Damon Jackson for surely could submit 
Billy Q. I don't think that's, I think it's crazy if you say it's not going to happen only because Damon Jackson has 15 submissions. He knows how to get it. Now, I don't think he, I don't think Damon Jackson gets finished per se. I don't think the punches coming back from Billy Q is going to be that significant. I do really like Damon Jackson in this one. I do think he can win. Now, Billy Q by, um, uh, Billy Q by points is plus 420. I think either one of these by points, plus 350 for Damon Jackson, plus 420 for Billy Q. I don't think this fight really is finished. And I do think if it is finished, it's by Damon Jackson. He has 15 subs. He has a lot of finishes. And so again, I like, I think Damon Jackson wins. And there's some really, really good bets. If I was betting, honestly, I would either do Damon Jackson by points plus 350 or Damon Jackson by submission. If you're a Billy Q fan, Billy Q by points plus 420 is an incredible bet, and I would do it before the fight starts because that is going to go way down, way down. It's going to be a favorite in that one. So, again, really, 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 really good bets. Now we go to the main card, Ignacio Baja Mendez versus Ludovic Klein. Ludovic Klein's a plus 180 underdog, minus 225 for Ignacio Baja Mendez. You know, I, I think Ma, Ignacio Baja Mendez by points is a plus 155, so not great. Ludovic Klein has shown the ability to have decent strikes at times, but he's going to really, really struggle with a guy like Ignacio Baja Mendez. You know, Baja, Baja Mendez, I think he's going to struggle with the fact that he's going to have a hard time getting in. He's going to be at distance. He's going to be the shorter guy. He is going to be leg kicking a lot, I would believe. He's not a crazy submission guy. He actually has been submitted. He was submitted by um, uh, Nate Landwehr and, yeah, just Nate Landwehr. So Ignacio Baja Mendez by TKO or KO. I don't really know if Ignacio Baja Mendez finishes Ludovic Klein, but I could see Ignacio Baja Mendez by points, which is plus 155. Now, again, total rounds is, they think it'd be, you know, Underdog is plus 112 under two and a half, which I don't think that's what happens. Yeah, there's not great bets with this one. Um, Ignacio by submission or Ludovic Klein by points. No, no. Let's see. Ludovic Klein to win, start number two. Either fighter to win in the first three minutes of the fight, not fight to be won in the fourth minute of any round. There's some good bets in here for sure. Uh, Ignacio to win by TKO or KO in the first 30 seconds of round one. That's insane. Ignacio Bud to win by submission. No, 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 no. Winning round. We're just looking here for a minute. Winning round. No. First minute of round one. Jesus. Double chance. Oh, okay. Yeah, double chance is probably the way to go. Ignacio Baja Mendez. KO, uh, that's C, KO or on points is a minus 175. Submission or on points is a plus 110. See, there's not great ones. If you were betting, I would probably stick to the uh, uh, Ignacio Baja Mendez submission or on points. Do that with a parlay of something else, another fight that maybe isn't crazy like, betting odds, you know, per se. Like you could do uh, Tanner Bozer versus Alexa Kummer. Kummer. Uh I think Kummer wins by points, and that is a plus three seventy. So you could throw that up there. You know, put five dollars down, and you win forty two bucks. Some you know plus eight forty uh, odds on that one. Again, there's some really really good ones. I, I do. There's a special one here: Tanner Bozer by KO or, T, or Leska by points. That's a plus one ten. So you could either take that one off and put that one there. Oh, it's a freaking parlay. You can't really do that. But again, if you're going to bet on that last fight, Nasi Baja Mendez, I would just do by points and see whatever that um, comes out on. Next is Tanner Bozer versus Alexa Kummer. Uh, Alexa Kummer is a plus one thirty four. Taking a lot of time off. Uh, Tana Bozer just isn't great. And if you lose to Ian Kutalabe, I don't care who you are, there's an issue. 
So Tanner Bozer by points is a plus 170. Finish is KO or TKO. I think he puts himself in some bad spots in this one. And I think Alexa Kemmer by points or by finish is a plus 410. But by points is probably what happens. I think Alexa Kemmer by points is plus 370. I think that's a great, great bet. Now, if Tanner Bozer can get on top of Alexa, uh, Alexa, then... There might be some problems there, but I really like Kermer by points plus 370. Will the fight go to distance? It's saying it probably will. Over, under, unders, brutal. Now, if you do submission plus 950, that would for sure be a bet. You know, you could throw a damn dollar on that. Let's see, a dollar, $9.50. So again, there isn't much to uh, double chance do Alexa or Kmer by oh TKO or K, uh, or KO are on points is plus one fifty. Some really really good bets. Again, if I had to do it, I would say probably uh, Alexa Kmer by points, and that is a plus three seventy underdog. Next is Diego Lopez versus Gavin Tucker. I understand Diego Lopez didn't look great on the stand up when he fought Mobzar, but he did rock Mobzar in that fight with, on the feet and he also was constantly threatening on the ground. Just not something you really expect from a guy that's taking the, that fight on such a short notice against a high level grappler and he kind of made the stock drop a little bit on uh, Mobzar, Mobzar Ivalov. You know, and Diego Lopez by submission, which is plus 250. Something I really like in that fight with Diego Lopez. He's 21 and 6. You know, he has 11 wins by submission, 8 by TKO or KO. He has 19 finishes. Only been to decision twice. Has been caught with punches twice, but hasn't been finished since 2018 with punches. He, yeah, with he, da, 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 yeah. Only in grappling he's been submitted as of late. Um, Again, even the Joe Anderson burrito, he showed a lot of good things in that one in that fight. So, fighting Gavin Tucker, who is good on the feet, does have some good grappling as well. Six wins by submission, four but wins by TKO or KO. Ten finishes out of his thirteen uh, wins. One loss by KO, one loss by decision, which was a beatdown. The issue is, is Gavin Tucker is now thirty-seven years old. I just think that time has passed, and Diego Lopez is going to be a little bit too much. He's a lot younger, 28 years old, nine years younger. Wild to me. Wild. Um, again, he has 19 finishes out of his 21 victories. I really, really like Diego Lopez in this fight. I think it's actually by submission, which is plus 250, or honestly, by KO or TKO, which is plus 440. Now, you could do a double chance one. And you could go Diego Lopez by KO, TKO, or submission, but it's only plus 110. Gavin Tucker uh, by KO or TKO or on points is a plus 180. I really, really like, and the favorite actually is Diego Lopez by submission or on points, which is minus 105. KO or TKO, I think Diego Lopez wins by KO or TKO in rounds one or two. That is an incredible bet. That is the bet that I would think that would happen. Now, or you could go Diego Lopez because he has 11 finishes by submission. You could do Diego Lopez to win submission in rounds one or two, and that's a plus 320. Or you could do Diego Lopez to win by submission in rounds two or three. I think it's going to be somewhere in rounds one or two. There's some awesome bets on here. Some some good, 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 good bets to make. You, you can put five bucks, you win sixteen dollars. You know, there's some really, really good bets again. Or you could do this the method of victory and Gavin Tucker by I mean not Gavin Tucker Diego Lopez by points is plus three forty. Diego Lopez by submission. You know. He has 19 finishes, like I said. Diego Lopez, I'm not really for sure if he finishes him with punches, but I do think his punches set up are going to set up the submission. I do think he hurts him and then subs him. So again, Diego Lopez by submission is probably the one that I would do. Do 10 bucks, win $25. Some really, really good bets on that uh, aspect of that call, of that fight. Next, you have Dustin Jacoby versus Kennedy and Zekachu. I and Dustin Jacoby is a plus one thirty two underdog. Jesus, underdog. I like Zekachu actually. I think Zekachu by TKO or KO, which is plus two thirty. I like Ze Kennedy and Zekachu. Now, Dustin Jacoby by points, which is plus three ten, could make this fight a little interesting. But I I like. 
Ke- uh, Kennedy and Zekachu to win by KO, probably rounds two or three, which is plus 500. That is the bet that I would make absolutely. That is a parlay that I would do together. Diego Lopez by submission, plus 250. Or Kennedy and Zekachu to win by KO or TKO in rounds two or three. You put five bucks on there, you want $100. You know, I mean, you want 100 you put 100 you win 2000 there is a lot of good bets on that that one, and that is the bet that I am making. I am making for sure. I like that one a lot. Tatiana Suarez versus Jessica Andrade. Jessica Andrade is plus two ninety underdog. Tatiana Suarez is minus three eighty five. Jessica, not Jessica. Tatiana Suarez by submission, which is plus one twenty five. I do think this is a finish. I don't think there's going to be, I don't think Tatiana Suarez is going to finish her with punches. I think it's going to be, maybe she hurts her with the punches, but I think it's going to be Jessica Andrade swarming her. She rocks her and then finishes her by submission. So if you do like um, submission round combos, another parlay type thing, do Tatiana Suarez to win by submission in rounds two or three plus 440. That is an incredible bet there. Shoot, you could even do Tatiana Suarez to win by submission rounds one or two just to hedge that bet a little bit, plus 160. I personally like rounds two or three. I think that's when it happens. Do I add that with the Diego Lopez submission, Kennedy and Zekachu to win by TKO KO rounds two or three. Also, Tatiana Suarez to win by submission in rounds two or three. The three-leg parlay, which is a plus 11,000 odds, put five bucks on there, went 562. You could even put a damn dollar, went 112 bucks. So some really, really good bets. That is the bet that I'm for surely going to be making. That is a great, great bet. I don't see Andrade winning that fight. I like Tatiana Suarez, and I like her by submission later in the fight. Now we go to the main event. Corey Sanhagen versus Rob Font. Rob Font at plus 270. Now this is a very interesting thing that I didn't think about at first. Rob Font was preparing to fight Song Yudong. You can't imagine he was just going to strike with them. That would be craziness. You got to think he was going to use a lot of output, a lot of volume, a lot of uh, movements, and honestly, maybe even implementing some wrestling as well. Probably the same thing that Corey Sandhagen's is going to do. So you're going to have these two guys, pretty good cardio, both preparing to fight different fighters. Corey Sandhagen preparing for a grappler. That's now what Rob Font is. Even though Rob Font does have quite a bit of finishes on his record, you know, Rob Font 20 and 6. Four wins by submission, nine wins by TKO or KO, 13 finishes out of 20 uh, victories, 10 and 5 in the UFC. Some really, really good finishes on his record. Corey Sanhagen, 16 and 4, uh, 10 finishes out of 16 wins. Has it obviously was submitted once by Aljamain Sterling, three decisions. Um, again, I think this fight is going to be chaos. I think it's going to be wild. I think method of victory is definitely the way to go on this one. Or double chance. You could do Corey Sanhagen by KO or on points. Well, that's actually a favorite, which is minus 250. I don't think he finishes them, honestly, with hands. If anything, it'd be a submission or on points. I just I don't see... Sanhagen finishing Rob Font. If there's any finish at all, it's going to be Rob Font. And I again, I don't think it's going to be TKO or KO. Rob Font by points is plus 500. He can make this fight wild. Corey Sanhagen's a plus 170. He doesn't have many much power. This fight, I believe, goes to a decision. If there's, again, the better, more technical striker is Rob Font. The guy who has more power and has that one punch power is Rob Font. We've seen it before. Now, fighting the way that Corey's going to fight with just a lot of movement, a lot of output, I don't think he's going to sit there long enough for Rob Font to catch him with punches. So I do think Sanhagen personally wins this fight. I have him to win. But a really good bet is Rob Font by points, which is plus 500. I don't see Sanhagen finishing him. If there is a finish, it's going to be a rough from Rob Font, I think. So Rob Font by points, because this fight could be close. Who knows with the scorecards nowadays. But Rob Font by points, plus 500. That's another really, really good one. So you could do make that a four-leg parlay. Uh, submission with Diego Lopez, T- finish in rounds two or three for Nzekachu, Tatiana Suarez finish in rounds two or three, and Rob Font by points, which is altogether a plus 67,000 odds. You could do a dollar, still win 679 bucks. 
you could do, like I said, 10 bucks when $6,000. Unbelievable. Put five bucks on it, $3,300. Again, really, really good bets in this one. Awesome bets. But let me know what you guys are betting. Again, a couple locks for me is Tatiana Suarez, um, Diego Lopez. Honestly, my biggest locks are Tatiana Suarez. Um, I don't trust Tanner Bozer, but I can't really trust Alexa for sh- either. Kyler Phillips is good. Um, God, some locks is Jeremiah Wells and Tatiana Suarez. Those are my two locks. Ignacio Baja Mendez, I like, but that's a tough one for sure. Um, a lot of really tough picks on this one. That's why there's not crazy odds. Um, but again, my locks, Suarez and uh, Jeremiah Wells is would be a couple locks for me. Either way, let me know what you guys think. As always, subscribe, like, comment. Again, let me know what bets you guys are making. Let's talk about it for sure. If you have any questions at all, let me know, and I will see you at the next one. I'll see you tonight when I'm going live. Thank you guys so much. You know what it is. Peace.